Hi everyone, welcome back to the Tom Morgan Drum Studio. Today we're going to jump right in to reading music and we're going to be using the book uh, quite a bit. I'll be referring to it throughout the video. Uh, it's a sequential approach to fundamental snare drum and the link again to purchasing that you can find in the comments below. Um, <clears throat> so hopefully you already have purchased the book. Again, you're going you're gonna to definitely need the book as we go through these videos because we're really going to be playing exercises out of it and um, you'll need your own copy of it. It's also available in an e-copy too. If you don't want to buy the hard copy, you can buy an e-copy. That's at C. Allen Publications. And again, you can find the, the links below to, to get that either through directly through the publisher or through Steve Weiss Music. Or again, I encourage you to see if you can get your local music store to order it if they don't already have it and uh, buy it through them. All right. A lot of people are afraid of, of reading music. A whole lot of people, uh, music people that just kind of learn on their own tend to avoid learning how to read. But if you, if you don't learn how to read, you're really handicapping yourself. You know, many of the exercises that we're going to be um, learning on snare drum and even as you go on into drum set, they're written out. I mean, you have to be able to read music to be able to learn different beats and practice them unless you're just going to learn everything by ear. Um, nothing wrong with learning by ear, but to really function as a musician, you really need to learn to read. And it's not that hard. And we're going to try to make it as simple as we can today. So turn to page six in your book, and you'll notice there's a, a page of just explanation, introduction to music reading. And at the top of the page, you'll see there's a five line, four space staff. And if you've looked at music at all, uh, piano music or any kind of music, written music, you've seen the five line, four space staff. And of course, every line and every space is a different note. Well, we're playing an instrument that just has one sound at this point, just one sound. So we don't need all those lines and spaces. Really what we only need is one line. And so you can see underneath the five line staff, uh, I have just a one line staff. And that's what we're going to be using in the book. Until we get into anything that's multiple percussion where we need different lines to represent different percussion instruments, and then we'll add to that staff. But for now, we just need one line. Okay, so that's what the percussion staff looks like. Okay, now if you go on down to the next little blurb there, you'll see that it talks about something called a time signature. And a time signature tells us some important things. And I've got my very high-tech uh, board here that I can use to show you uh, the different time signatures. The first one we're going to talk about is this one, which, as you might have guessed, is called 4-4 four, four time. In these time signatures, these are different ones down here, 2-4 and 3-4. We're not going to worry about what the bottom number means at this point. It's just going to add confusion, and we'll talk about those on down the line when it becomes pertinent to what we're dealing with. So we're just going to deal with the top, the top number. So the top number of any time signature tells you the number of counts in a measure. What's a measure? Well, let's drop back and look at that first, you know, one line uh, staff there on page six. And you'll see that the, the line, the staff, has vertical lines every so often that divide the staff up into sections. And those sections are called measures, okay? So the top number tells you how many, how many uh, counts are in a measure. Now, one of the most important things we have to remember as we start out here is a definition of a count. That's where a lot of people get mixed up is they start talking about beats and counts 
and they don't really ever define what those are. And so people kind of have this nebulous idea of, well, I don't really know what a count is, but I'm, you know, assigning a certain number of counts to this node or whatever. So we're going to say a count for our definition is a number and an and. So we're going to be counting out loud a lot, uh, pretty much all the time throughout these lessons. When you practice, I want you to count out loud. So we want uh, four counts in a measure. So a count, when you're counting out loud, is going to be four numbers and ands. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. And you can see uh, underneath that blurb there where it talks about time signatures, I've got another one line staff divided into four measures and each of those measures has four counts, four numbers and ands. Okay, so that's what we're going to use as our definition. Now, some people will use the term beat and they'll say, well, it really means four beats in a measure. And there's really nothing wrong with that, but we'll find out later on that it becomes important to be able to make a distinction between a beat and a count. Because in this case, the beat or the pulse that you feel, one and two and three and four and, is the same as the count. Okay, they're really the same thing at this point. When we get into compound meter and other things that are a little, a little different, you'll find that the beat is not the same as the count. And at, at that point, it becomes very instructive to have a, a clear understanding of the difference between a beat and a count. But for now, don't worry about that. We're just going to call it a count, a number and an and. Okay? And then we're going to take on, if you go on down there to the bottom of the page, page six, you'll see that we introduce our first note, which is this one here. And our first note is called a quarter note. Quarter note. All right? And a quarter note gets one count. Okay? So every time you see a quarter note, you're going to give it a number and an and when you're counting out loud. So if you look at the bottom, the very bottom of page six, you'll see that, or, or sorry, not the very bottom, uh, second line from the bottom, second line of music from the bottom, you'll see I've got four quarter notes in every bar, every measure, sometimes they're called bars, um, but every measure has four quarter notes and each quarter note is getting one count, so we have four counts in a measure. So if I were going to play that line and practice it, I would practice it this way, counting out loud and just moving through, trying to keep an even tempo as much as I can. Um, so I'll play that line, the second musical line from the bottom. One and two and three and four and one and two and three three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and pretty simple right you just read music if you play that you're reading music you're counting out loud and you're playing quarter notes all right let's look at the very bottom now of page six and you'll notice we've added something else a little squiggly line and that squiggly line is called a rest, a quarter rest. And it looks something like that. That's not the most perfect rendition of it, but that's what it looks like. You can see it there in the book. Now, as the name implies, a rest means you don't play. So a quarter rest gets one count, just like the quarter note does. It gets a number and an end, and it simply means that you don't play for that count. So if you look at the very bottom of page six, you'll see that in the first measure, the quarter rest falls on count four. So on count four, you're just gonna not play there. You're still gonna count it out loud. You don't wanna not count it because remember, silence is just as important as sound in music. 
We don't want to give the sense that, or the impression that a rest isn't important. That little measure, measured time, one count of silence is very important. And so we want to think about performing the rest in a sense, where when I see a rest, I don't just skip over it quickly and go on to the note, next note, but I, I make sure I give that rest its full time value. In the second measure of that line, you see that the rest falls on three, so we're going to not play on three and. And then in the next one, it's two, and the last one, it's on one. So I'll play the bottom line of page six and uh, count out loud. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Notice when I'm counting, I'm very careful to put the ands exactly in the middle between the numbers. I'm not going to count it one and, two and, three and, four and. I'm going to count it one and, two and, three and, four and. I'm going to be very careful to make sure that the numbers and ands are all as even as I can get them all the way across. All right, so we have two notes, the quarter note and the quarter rest, and they each get one count, a number, and an and. Now, that brings us to page seven. Page seven are, is just exercises for you to practice you reading these music, this music in different combinations of notes and rests, and just get used to it. And you notice that if you look at number one, we have uh, an exercise that's three lines long, and there's something I want to point out there. Um, at the end of each line, the first two lines of number one on page seven, there's just a regular bar line, just like all the other ones. So when you get to the end of line one, you're going to go right on to line two without stopping. And when you get to the end of line two, you're going to go right on to line three without stopping. But when you get to the end of line three, you notice there's a double bar a solid, a more solid, darker bar plus a regular bar line. That means that the exercise or the piece of music is finished. It's over, and that's where you stop. Okay? So as long as you don't see that, you just keep reading and keep counting and keep playing all the way to the end. So number one is a three-line exercise. All right, so I'm going to play number one. And I'm going to count us off. Before I start, I'm going to count one measure of 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and to get so, if you want to play it with me, you can hear that and get the tempo in your head and then start with me and try playing along with me. Um, but also, I would really want you also to, to play it by yourself too. But it's helpful to play along with, with me uh, because you'll, you know, if you're having trouble keeping an even tempo, that might help you get a feel for what an even tempo feels like to play and sounds like. It'll point out little flaws. Maybe if you're speeding up or slowing down, you'll notice that you're all of a sudden not with me anymore. So we want to have you practice it both ways, with me, but then <clears throat> also without me on your own. Okay, so here's exercise one. I'll count us off. One and two and three and four and 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 one and two and 
three and four and one and two and three and four and. Good. Now a couple of things there. Um, you notice I didn't stop or change my tempo to take a, a, a breath. I snuck a breath in in between my counting because music doesn't stop for us to take a breath. I mean, it keeps flowing right along. So we don't want to stop and put a big space there while we breathe. And you have to practice just learning how to sneak in a breath and keep your counting going. Also, you may have noticed a couple other things. I, for the most part, just kind of alternated my sticking. I'm not going to worry too much about that. I mean, don't play the whole thing with one hand, but <clears throat> essentially you're just going to try to alternate all, your way, all the way through as much as you can. Well, let's go on to number two. Number two is the time signature changes in number two. You notice that now, instead of a four on the top, it's three four times. So now, as you might have guessed, that means that there are three counts in a measure now. So nothing else changes. We're going to count one and two and three and one and two and three and all the way through. Now remember, here's a, a trap that I've had students fall into. Without realizing it, they count it this way. One and two and three and. One and two and three and. One and two. And so they're, they don't realize it, but they're putting a space after each third count. And what they're unintentionally doing is actually still playing in four, four time. They're just adding a silent count uh, after three. So three has to go right to one. Um, the distance between three and one has to be the same as the distance between one and two and two and three. So as you'll notice as I play it, we're going to flow right from three to one. It'll all just be an even tempo all the way across. Okay, so here we go with number two. Again, I'll count you off. Um, and then we'll get started together. One and two and three and 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 Hopefully you noticed that was a two-line exercise and you didn't stop at the end of the first line. Also, another thing that's new on this, that the very end of the, the exercise, you see a different kind of ending. There's a repeat sign there, and it's just like a double bar, except we add the two little dots. And when you see that, that means you repeat the exercise again. I didn't do that this time for the sake of time, but um, you know, just so you'll know that, you'll see that popping up as you read music, and that's all it means is just repeat again. Okay, we're gonna drop down to number three now, which again changes the time signature to two four time. So now there are two counts in the measure. So we're gonna be counting one and two and one and two and all the way through. Again, it's a two-line exercise, so when we get to end of line one, we're going to go right on to the second line without stopping. <clears throat> okay, so again, I'll count you off, and then we'll start. One and two, and 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 one and two 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 and all right good so that's the third exercise so for this video that's all we're going to cover 
I just want you to, if you still are confused, maybe read back through page six. Um, if you have questions and you want to leave questions or comments in the comment section below, again, I'll do my best to try to read those and answer any questions I can. Um, and then watch for the next video because, again, each video is going to be the next step as we move through our book, A Sequential Approach to Fundamental Snare Drum. All right, so thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.